Zambia's financial services sector has been pinpointed as a key area of growth. Over the past few years, this sector has become a stable and secure environment where investors from around the world have enjoyed the recent boom. If you go back five, ten years ago, essentially you had a market where the vast majority of the investment, both by the institutional investors, the commercial banks and the investment banks, was really into government paper. When the Mwanawasa administration came in in 2001, uh, there was the whole push towards meeting the HIPAA completion point, which had started uh, through the Chalua administration. The Monasa administration became a lot more aggressive with it. That was met about four or five years ago. And the interesting thing we saw in that transformation was once that the targets had been met and um, the debt forgiveness and other things had come through, that administration still maintained the same, um, the same path. And so there was a lot more fiscal discipline from the government. There was a lot more openness with the uh, private sector. The yields in government paper dropped. And so we suddenly saw now banks trying to be a lot more creative in what they do. The privatization program catapulted the creation of the Lusaka Stock Exchange, which in 2007 increased by 44% and was Africa's top performing stock exchange. Clearly 2008 was a difficult year for the Lusaka Stock Exchange on the back of what had been a very strong stellar run into 2007. Uh, to put that into perspective, in 2007 we listed a cobalt energy company, CEC, that was hugely successful. It was followed by Celtel, now Zane, and we also did uh, Zambia National Commercial Bank. The biggest concern for the financial sector at the moment is how to mitigate the effects of the global financial crisis. Zambia is an open market for foreign fund managers and the real effects are still to be felt. We felt it in that um, uh, foreign investors have driven the market to some extent. In the good times of course they come uh, in their numbers and uh, you know, they, they give us the, visi the visibility that we require. But uh, of late in 2007 we've seen that in a negative kind of way in that uh, you know, they've been selling out for various reasons as you know. Um, and that has had an impact both on the, on the exchange rate as well as on the general price levels. And it's this openness that some say is a double-edged sword for Zambia. Part of the success of the Lusaka Stock Exchange is the fact that Zambia is an, is an open economy. We do not have exchange controls. We do not have limits on foreign share ownership. We do not have capital gains tax. So that has made the Lusaka Stock Exchange particularly attractive to foreign investors, particularly major market fund managers. And also you have to look at the fact that for many years the Lusaka Stock Exchange valuation uh, levels were extremely low and that made the market also very attractive. And therefore we were affected by the global economic uh, crisis or the global downturn. So yes, we are connected into the global economy, that's a reality. And we need to really find a way in which we can manage that situation. And my view is that we need to develop the domestic institutional investment base. We need to strengthen that significantly so that more local investors are involved in the domestic market. The financial services industry might be small, but it's certainly not boring. The sector is seeing a lot of intra-Africa activity, and this might just be the answer to surviving the global slowdown. Is that there's a lot more interest being expressed from Namibia, uh, Kenya, Nigeria and obviously obviously South Africa and on the South African side what we are seeing is a lot of it is in the, is in the real estate uh, segment. On the Nigerian side you obviously have access who's, who have now been operating in Zambia for the last two months or so and this talk of uh, UBA, uh, Echo Bank which is a more of a West African bank but sort of still from the same region uh, in addition to that, we are, we are aware that Dangoti, through cement and sugar, is also very keen to establish himself in Zambia. On the Zambian side, you also have Zambif, which is Zambia's largest uh, agribusiness. 
and they have a regional and pan-African rollout as well. Along with foreign direct investment, there is a concerted effort to develop in the small and medium-sized enterprises sector. Uh, the SME sector is definitely one of our growth sectors. The SME is the growth sector here in Zambia. When you have a growing economy like you have in Zambia, the SMEs tend to be the engine of growth. The Lusaka Stock Exchange is modelling a version of the JSE's Altex to form an SME bourse. The approval has been given by the regulator for us to establish a third tier to take care of the, of the small and medium enterprises. Zambia has also made it a whole lot easier to set up a business, and this will put it in good favour with companies struggling with bureaucracy. And that's one of the reasons Zambia is slowly climbing the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index. We are a very peaceful country. Our uh, cli uh, economic climate is improving every year. We are reducing the cost of doing business in Zambia. The regulatory framework, the policies and all the regulations that constrain investment in Zambia, we're streaming that. For instance, the licensing process is going on whereby we are going to reduce the licenses that are required for somebody to set up a business from by about 60% so that people can come here and just register a company and get on with business without having to be bogged down by so many licenses that our current companies go through and the renewal of licenses. That is a heavy cost doing business. But the ease of doing business depends on good public and private partnerships. And while much has been improved on that front, a lot still needs to be done. There must be confidence that we are all in this together, public sector as well as private sector. We do now have a public-private uh, policy uh, framework in place, which was drawn up jointly between public sector and private sector. So that's a policy that is going to guide the relationship between government and uh, private sector. And what are the, the key um, areas of that framework? Uh, there are various, but the main focus is on infrastructure development. Uh, we need to work together to improve on the infrastructure. And with the growing middle class averse to renting houses, the construction and real estate sector is where the real opportunities are.